And most definitely, I give a shout out to Bible TV coming to Baltimore. I think this is a beautiful thing. He's on the road, he's checking in, and he's making it possible for people like myself and others that's doing this work to be able to come to our people in a larger community. Peace and Black Power family, welcome to another edition of Baba TV on the road here at um, another spot here in downtown Baltimore, another beautiful uh, black establishment owned by our brother. This is actually a good friend of Brother Seville's, um, Brother M. Hotep, and this brother does so many things here in Baltimore from working with the youth and this is his beautiful beautiful uh, vegan restaurant and before we get um, finished brother I want you to be sure to shout out the brother who drew all this on the wall and just um, for those that don't know introduce yourself to the people yeah peace and peace and blessing families uh, my name is M. Hotep I see spot tool I'm the founder of PLM, Pan-African Liberation Movement, based out of Baltimore City. And PLM is the parent organization of the Grub Factory, where we are at today, which is a vegan cafe. Um, we make vegan easy here. We do vegan breakfast food all day long, um, Mondays through Sunday. Um, you can come in, you get your vegan good breakfast food, and we got also we specialize in a lot of the vegan um, mac and cheese. We got your um, I guess you could say home fries. We got some good food here. So um, I'm in Hotel. Yeah, I'm a founder of PLM, run a nonprofit youth organization, Urban Youth Initiative Project. Been doing that since 2006, and our primary focus with the youth organization is the social, emotional, social, emotional, spiritual development, and cultural awareness of urban youth. Because from my experience, most of the children tend to be off course when they don't have a sense of who they are. So our organization, the Urban Youth Initiative Project, is focused on trying to reinstill into African children a sense of their Africanity. Mm. Beautiful brother. Talk a little bit about, because I know one of your students who used to be in D.C., but he's now in, uh, lives here in Baltimore, uh, Brother um, Shabazz. Talk about um, what, you, what you're doing with uh, Brother Shabazz, you know, just the youth in general. Well, one of the things, um, my part of my focus is, is, is cultural awareness. Um, cultural awareness from a historical perspective. Um, I'm of the opinion that most of the issues that we suffer from as a people is deeply rooted in a confusion. And I believe that confusion stems from us not knowing who we are. And I believe that we, you, you can begin to um, instill a sense of self-knowledge, cultural awareness. You can bring forth clarity. And clarity allows people to know who they are. And every Sunday from 2 p.m., from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. and then from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., PLM um, has a study class, um, African Awareness and Critical Thinking Study Class. I'm the facilitator of the second portion of that study class from 6 p.m. and currently we're studying in the book, um, The Island of Means, written by Dr. Wade Nobles. And I use the study class as a means to engage young people, to help them come into a knowledge of who they are, to engage young people in a way they can have dialogue and discussion about the pertinent issues that impact us as a people. Um, I like to talk to them about how they, how they see themselves and what their role is as a young person going forward 
as we as a people move forward in our development. And that's principally what I tend to do with the young people is prepare them for a leadership role, prepare them for a type of independence that allows them to be connected to a larger body, but not an independence that dichotomizes them from a larger community to give them an understanding that they are responsible for and accountable to a larger community. And that comes way by way of their knowledge in terms of cultural awareness, historical clarity. And uh, it looks as though you emphasize on Kemet. Why Kemet, brother? Um, we, we, we highlighted Kemet in here because of the, for one, African people are very symbolic people. Imagery matters to us. So our thinking was if we could create an environment that depicted the deities that would have the impact on our people as they came in and began to socialize in the, the space. So Kemet stood out because of its spiritual significance and its classical um, achievements. So we wanted to hold that and highlight that. But overall, the, the ambiance is an African ambiance. But we highlighted Kemet because of those specific deities and the principles behind the deities to tap into the symbology of the African mind. That was the thinking. And I, not too long, I just saw you not too long ago at the Sarnetta TV Awards. You're a brother who always um, knows Brother Sarnetta very well and is usually at all of his functions. Tell me a little bit, did you enjoy, what did you think about the Sarnetta TV Awards? Yes, um, I enjoyed the awards. Um, principally, you know, Baba Seville had reached out to me and shot the the flyer to me because I didn't know about it until I received the flyer but once I received the flyer and Baba Seville made me aware and he was saying that he was possibly will be receiving a reward so I felt like it made sense to, to travel from Baltimore to New York. I think one of the mistakes that's made in the community of people that's professing to be Pan-African is, is we don't travel enough. Baltimore and New York is not that far away from each other, three and a half hours, four hours apart. We should be traveling up and down 95 all the time. We should be supporting each other always, Baltimore and D.C., Baltimore and Philly. So me going there was just in the spirit of trying to manifest what our ancient ancestors laid down when they said Pan-Africanism. They spoke in terms of the collectivity of us and the unity of that collectivity. So the, the Sarnata TV Awards was significant because it was a milestone in the movement. And so whenever we are making milestones as we move forward, I feel there's a duty that we should be of support in some capacity. We should always be willing to support us, to aid us, to help us, so that we may be better at doing the things that we are doing. All right, Brother M. Hotep, um, give the family a little bit more of, of your background. It's a great question because oftentimes in the movement we don't really get to hear people's background, but I think it's very important that we talk about our background because transparency is important and we should always be able to tell the people who we are, where we came from, and how we arrived at where we are at. So you're looking at M. Hotep, I see Sfatu. That's who I am today. But I was born Antoine Terrain. From Baltimore, Baltimore, Maryland. Um, my background, I came up in the streets and I sold dope, sold drugs, you know, committed armed robberies. Um, only went to the eighth grade. In um, 1990, I went to prison. I was serving 20 years. So from 1990 up until 2004, I was in prison. And it was during this time period that I began to come into a knowledge and an awareness of who I am as an African. By first reading a book in 1992 by J.A. Rogers called From Superman to Man. I read that book in 1992 and it opened my mind up and it set me on a mission. And I've been on that mission ever since. From reading that book, I came to understand that we had to be clear about who we were from a historical point of view. We had to know who we are. Who we, are. we had to know who we once were. If we were going to be effective and moving forward in this mission, we needed to have that knowledge. And also what I came to realize as I began to study, read, and reflect more about the history of our people as it related to me as an individual during this time period, I realized that we are a spirit people. And I came to understand that we must take spirit wherever we go. So spirit has to be invoked, spirit has to be summoned, spirit has to be tapped into, and we must be able to access the knowledge 
and the awareness that's embedded in spirit and use that as we move forward as a people to change these conditions to help lift ourselves. So my history, my background um, comes from me working first with brothers in prison. I began to take this information to see if it was effective by working with other individuals. I knew it impacted my life. I knew it had transformed me and it was still transforming me, but I had to see if it could do the same for other individuals. So around 1995, I began to work out, work with the younger populations in prison, in the Maryland penal institutions, and I began to see the same result. Brothers began to transform their lives. So I knew that this was, this was the way. I knew that we had to go back to our ancient roots and tap into that and utilize that as a healing mechanism, as a tool to transform who we were as a people to get us out of this mentality of being selfish, individualistic, materialistic, overly aggressive, we had to get out of this mindset. I'm um, not caring for one another. We throw, we, we throw away relationships too easy. We don't tolerate one another. That's because we don't know who we are anymore. That's because we are not in tune with one another anymore. And I knew that in order for us to survive and make it and win and be effective, we had to come back into a mindset that spoke to our Africanity. So I began to push this knowledge. So when I came home in 2004, I didn't look back. I've been working ever since. I've been building the nonprofit organization. I've written four books, currently writing a fourth book. Um, opened the, the vegan restaurant. We're currently building a bookstore. We are also in the process of doing a fundraiser where we're about to open up an independent school for children ages six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 because we know we need to be able to educate our own children. To date, we've raised 20,000. Um, looking for more individuals, you know what I'm saying, to, to, give, to give to that because it's not going to take us 10 years to build this school. You know, we're not going to keep talking about building the school. You know, we're going to build it and we reach into the community to be a part of that. And you can, like I said, you can research MOTIP, I see Spiritual, you can look up PLM and you can see the work that we are doing, the work that we're doing in the community and you can get a better understanding of who I am. Because at the base of all that I do is my focus is sociality. We got to be better socialized and cultural awareness. While you're on it, I don't want to forget. Shout out um, for the people, your uh, email, Facebook, Instagram, so forth, Twitter. Yes, on the, my, my um, Facebook is Mhotep Fatu, I M H O T E P F A T I U. That's the same for my Instagram, Mhotep Fatu. My email is I F A T I U at yahoo.com. Or you can go to my webpage, the T H E first, one S T philosopher. Dot com, the first urban philosopher.com. That's my website. You can follow me there. You can find out more things that I'm doing, my videos, my books. Um, you can go to PLM on the Facebook and, and, and get in contact with me. You can go to PLM on Instagram, get in contact with me. You can go to YouTube. Um, I'm on YouTube, M Hotel Fatu, and you get the same information there as well. So you can find me all through social media, all on the internet. Just put that name in and you can get you can reach me. Brother Emotep, talk about some of your teachers and the elders um, on which the shoulders that you stand, because we know it's very important that uh, no matter how intelligent we may get, that, you know, not to understand that, you know, the elders are very important and not to lose them and to keep hold of them and hold them in reverence. So who are, who are your teachers and some of the elders, brother? That's an excellent point. Um, oftentimes, we tend to believe we know it all. We tend to believe that we have arrived and we tend not to um, highlight these, the elders. But for me, um, like I said earlier on, I stand on culture. I believe culture is the key to, to solving our problem. Um, I, I go to my grave saying that culture is the key to solving our problems. And let me, make a, let me digress a little bit. So I know a lot of times we hear things or we don't fully understand. So when I say culture, I'm talking about the totality of our way as a people. That, that's inclusive of our spirituality, our economics, our, our governance, our social interactions. That, that's inclusive of our military, our defense, child rearing. It's, it's inclusive of all of that. So when I talk about culture, I'm talking about a way of life that's indigenous to us as a people. So having said that, there is no way that I can stand on culture and not stand on elders. Because elders are the bedrock of the culture. Elders are the... They are our, our archives. They are the custodians. We have to consult them on, on a regular basis. For me, no doubt Dr. John Henry Clark, Dr. Dr. Ben, 
um, John G. Jackson, Ivan Van Sertema, some of the ones who've transcended, but I also like to stand on Dr. Jacob Carruthers. Um, I like to also stand on the shoulders of those who have stood around, Dr. Wade Nobles, Je Leonard Jeffries, Professor Smalls, that I'm, I'm always in contact with, Dr. Oba Tashaka, Walamu Barudi, uh, Mama Marimba, um, Raketi Yamin, um, Dr. Patricia Newton is right here in Baltimore City. She's a gem, she's a jewel. Um, I lean on her all the time. There's too many that I, for me to name all of them, but just know that I utilize and I access every African, not Negro, but every African elder. Not someone that's faking. Not someone who think that they just are elder by a right of their age. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the OGs of the movement, if you want to use that terminology. I'm talking about the ones who put the work in and now they have earned the right to advise, to, who have earned the right to be able to provide wisdom to us. Those are the elders that I consult and those are the shoulders that I stand on and this is our way and I'm humble to them. When they speak, I'm quiet. We got to understand that. We never speak when they speak. When they give advice, I heed the wisdom. I got enough sense to think for myself but I know that for us in the African world that order and structure is very important and we must have a high reverence and a respect for those who came before us because they made it possible for us to be here today. And we must never feel like we've done anything of our own accord. All that we have done, others have done for us to make it possible for us to do the things that we do today. It becomes our responsibility to do the same for another generation. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. This is the work that I do. So for me, it's always about culture. I push culture. And that's the reason why we built this vegan cafe. It's the Grub Factory. And in the Grub Factory, everybody that work here is on the same level. We don't have chefs here. We don't have dishwashers. We don't have cashiers. We have community service providers. Everyone is the same across the board because you have to create a space and a place that's different from the spaces and places that this society have historically and contemporaneously creates for us. We got to create our own. Part of coming into our own, part of building power, is for us to develop the abilities and to cultivate the capacity to define, categorize, and conceptualize for ourselves. So that's the reason why we say we got communal service providers, so we don't got cashiers or dishwashers or, or chefs. On another note, because I notice you're in downtown Boston. This is pretty much downtown, midtown Baltimore. And coming in and seeing all this beautiful ambiance and um, craftsmanship and our people on the walls everywhere you look. And I notice that you have a lot of different people coming in here, Europeans. Do you find yourself correcting them ever when they come in here? Because, you know, some of them, you know, uh, 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 try to say that Egyptian civilization is European civilization. Have you ever had to correct anyone in here? Um, so that's an excellent question. Um, un no, actually. It's, it, what we receive more than anything is um, inquiry. Um, now, if, that, if the inquiry is coming from sincerity, it's a different thing. But most of the people, it's always a question of why or who, who was this particular deity or what did she do, things of that nature. So it's more so an opportunity for education, um, an opportunity for us to expand the awareness. Because believe it or not, we get more questions about the deities that come from Europeans rather than from black people. Right? But the black people tend to tune into the conversations when we are communicating to the Europeans. So it's more so a way in which we can communicate to our own people by way of them. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, that's what's happening. Well, Brother Mhotep, if you have any last words, I don't have any more questions for you other than, Brother, this is a very beautiful place. I will be back, and um, I'm getting ready to get something to eat here as soon as we get off the camera. Uh, any closing words, Brother? Yes, close, one of my closing words would be, um, this is my appeal to anyone that's tuning in, anyone that's listening. This is my appeal. From Mhotep Asis Fatu, the founder of PLM, based out of Baltimore, Maryland. We need your assistance. We need your help. We need to raise $70,000. We've raised 20. We need to raise $70,000 so we can purchase and renovate an abandoned property in West Baltimore. And with that property, we acquire two vacant lots that sits beside it, which we are going to transform into an independent school to educate our children. 
So we need our community, we need our people, we need the family to reach out to us, to contact me. My phone number is 410-900-7527. That's 410-900-7527. Please reach out, please assist us in this great endeavor so we can continue to do this work to educate and raise our children. We have a fundraiser that's coming up um, on in October. This fundraiser is when which we're doing a, the Royal African Gala fundraiser, and we are calling for African people far and near to, to tune in to be a part of this. If you can come out to be a part of the gala, to make a donation or make an investment rather. We're not even going to use the terminology donation. Make an investment. And if you're uncertain as to where your money is going to go, then research Imhotep Aziz Fratu. Do your research. You call out call out to the Bibles that I named and you ask them do they know Imhotep Fratu. Reach out. If you're, in, if you're in New York, reach out to Professor um, Smalls or Dr. Leonard Jeffries and you ask, do you know this about out of Baltimore, Baba Imhotep Aziz Fratu? What is he doing? Is he authentic? Is he legit? Then you reach out to Baba Wade Nobles. Reach out to Mama Mama Ani. Reach out to Wilder Mubarudi. They have various Sussbo on Facebook. And you do your research and you ask the question, is this Baba serious? Is he about to work? Will he take this money and build the school? And I can guarantee you that each and every elder Baba Mama that I name will stand behind me and tell you that I will build this school. I need your support. I've come from the gutter. I have no way to go but up for us. I got a 45 on my spinal cord. I was out here in these streets. I got 1989, I got two slugs put in me, a 45 and a 357. I've remained paralyzed for 18 months. I wore a colostomy bag for, for 18 months. I currently walk with a limp because I have no movement in my right foot. I am 100% committed and dedicated to the upliftment of African people. Please support us in this endeavor. Hold up and I love you. Let's give a shout out to Brother Doc Toons for doing all this beautiful artwork. Um, Brother Doc C-O-T. Tunes. You know, he's the artist behind all the work that you see on the wall. He didn't use no contractments. He did everything freehand. The only request that he said, he said, lock me in the place overnight. We put him in overnight. The next day we came in, and this is what you see. My hat. 